The same idea works for parametrized surfaces in 3D, but it's a little more complicated. Again, the derivative is what gives you not one tangent vector, but two tangent vectors. This is something that you really need to, to look at to see. Let's say that we have a parametrized surface in 3D. That means that we have a function with two inputs, two parameters, and three outputs, x, y, and z. Now, how do we get a tangent plane in this case? Well, here, the derivative is going to help us because the derivative is going to have two column vectors, not one, corresponding to the two inputs. Those two column vectors, those vectors are tangent to the surface, and they're going to be a basis for a tangent plane. So let's say that you have x as a function of t, where now the outputs x are really x, y, and z, and t is really t1 and t2. There are two parameters in this case. Now the tangent plane at a particular point, f at t naught, is given by the exact same formula, f of t naught plus the derivative of f times s. But now s, your parameters for the tangent plane, are two variables, s1 and s2. And what's happening is that the two columns of the derivative are being multiplied on the left. You're hitting those two parameters, s1 and s2, and that's telling you how far you're going along each tangent vector, along the two columns of the derivative. Now, this formula can seem a little confusing at first, it's best to see how this works in the context of an explicit example. So let's consider the following function, f of t1 and t2, with x-coordinate t1 minus 2 t2, y-coordinate 3 t1 t2, and z-coordinate t2 minus t1 squared plus 10. Now I have no idea what that looks like. I'm not going to draw a picture. We're just going to work through it we have to specify a base point for computing a tangent plane. Let's say it's where t1 is 3 and t2 is equal to 1. Now, what do we do? We compute the derivative. Take the partials with respect to t1 in the first column, t2 in the second column. That gives us 1, 3t2, negative 2t1, and negative 2, 3t1, 1. We have to evaluate the derivative at this location where t1 is 3 and t2 is 1. That gives us 1, 3, negative 6, negative 2, 9, 1. These two column vectors are tangent to the parametrized surface at the base point. Now, what base point is that and how are we going to use this in that formula? Well, let's take t1 equals 3, t2 equals 1, substitute those into f. That gives us the base point 1, 9, 2. Those are the x, y, and z coordinates. Now we're going to take the two columns of the derivative, work with those as tangent vectors, as basis vectors for this parametrized tangent plane, where we're giving the x, y, and z coordinates as a function of new parameters, s1 and s2. This is the same formula we've been working with, the same formula as in 1D, but look at how this decomposes. The constant terms are the base point. That's f of 3, 1. That's the 1, 9, and 2. Then what do we do? We take the two basis tangent vectors, multiply each by the respective parameter, s1 and s2. That's what this matrix vector product is giving us. So for example, when s1 and s2 are both zero, you're just at the base point. If s2 is zero and you move s1 back and forth, then you're moving along the first basis tangent vector, and likewise with the second. Okay, now what if instead of a parametrized plane, you want an implicit equation for this tangent plane? Some, some function of x, y, and z. Okay, in this case, we could take the cross product of these two tangent vectors. That gives us a third vector that is orthogonal to both the tangents. So to compute this normal vector, take 1, 3, negative 6, cross negative 2, 9, 1. Am I going to do that for you? 
Yes, I'm going to do that for you, though maybe you want to check my math. I get 571115, and plugging that into the point-slope formula gives me an equation, 57 times quantity x minus 1, plus 11 times quantity y minus 9, plus 15 times quantity z minus 2 equals 0. Simplify that out. You get 57x plus 11y plus 15z equals 186. Yeah, is this right? Well, if we plug in x equals 1, y equals 9, z equals 2, I think this is going to work. As to which you prefer, well, that's up to you. Implicit, parametrized, whatever. Each has its own advantages. One thing to note is that this method for getting an implicit plane based on the cross product only works in 3D, since we don't have a cross product in higher dimensions. The parametrized method, however, does work in higher dimensions. Hmm.